Howdy friends, welcome back to the House of Tone. My name is Wes Lee. I repair band instruments for a living. I started a YouTube channel to show what that's like. The other day we did a video on soft soldering. Today, part two, silver soldering. Why do we want a silver solder? In the last video I showed a brace that had been silver soldered. That's with the actual manufacturer of the brace before you soft solder it to the instrument. Okay, so practically, why do we want to do that? Silver soldering, broken keys on woodwind instruments, fabricating keys on woodwind instruments, fabricating braces that are no longer available on a brass instrument, fabricating of any kind of a part, annealing. You have to have a torch that's hot enough to be able to reach cherry red, tool making, heat treating, all kinds of different uses for a torch and the heat that you have to have to be able to silver solder or brace. So we're gonna take it a step further today. We're gonna to make a tool. We're gonna to make some braces, okay? Foundations of how to fabricate. Let's do it. Here's our setup of the tools that we need to be able to silver solder. We're gonna try this torch and see how it holds up. I actually never use it for brazing, but we're gonna see what it's gonna do. Smith Little Torch with interchangeable tips. A jig or fixture to hold your parts. Brazing flux. And brazing wire, silver solder wire. Okay, let's make a tool. If you watched one of the shorts this week, it was working on a damaged mellophone. And you saw me using a slide hammer and this is the tool that I made. Now this is just a crude piece of brass with another piece of brass. And I silver soldered them together. But then I soft soldered either side onto the horn. I'm sure I'm playing some video of that operation behind this. Okay, so if we're making an exact replica, it's real difficult to do here. We're going to mark this off. To about the length, we'll take another cut. And that'll get us roughly into shape. There are our pieces. And let's get our piece jigged up here. Now one thing you want to be aware of, no matter what kind of torch that you're going to use, you don't want the fixture to absorb all your heat. So from my angle, here's what we've got happening. Here's our short bar, cross bar. I'm coming straight with this brass bar. Notice how I have only a little bit of this piece chucked in. Just as little as I can get. I have plenty of room to lay in flux and my silver solder. Now our next thing to do is to, is to get some flux happening. I like to put it on my brazing wire and apply it to the parts. pretty solid, solidly coated. Okay, so we're gonna start with this blazer torch, freshly fueled. And let's see how it does. And I'm just gonna let this run in real time. We are getting some heat movement. And I'm just taking my silver solder and putting some flux where I'm going to want this to go. It appears that our heat has topped out. We don't actually have enough heat from this torch. Yeah, we're going to call it. We could not generate enough heat with that torch. Let's set up and use the other. This is the number seven tip. All right, and let's zoom it in. And I'm gonna also let this run in real time. I did let the joint completely cool down. You can see it getting cherry. And there goes our wire. 
we're done. That was it. And so that went from cold to brazing temperature in a, what was that, maybe 30 seconds? So we're done. But what if you have some old brace like this? And maybe you don't have any on hand. Let's break it down to its rawest form. Freeze has got these flat discs. They look like this. Here's a piece of that that we used. Okay, let's make some braces. Even if you don't have a lathe, you can do this. Let's do it. Let's square up this end. Okay, let's put it in our bench motor. Let's decide where the halfway point is going to be. And we'll say it's about right there. Okay, and we want to give it some slight tapers on either side. Spin it. File. Smooth file. There's one side. Let's do the other. Rough file. And here's a smooth file. Or a dress file. Okay. The cool thing about making your own is that you can get a thicker flange than what this stock piece was. And you can use thicker bar stock as well. Now the trick here is that the rod has more mass than the sheet flange. And so you can easily burn a hole in this with the heat that we're going to generate. So you want your predominant amount of heat to be at the focused at the rod. And you just have to just have to do it a few times and burn through some stuff and just get the hang of it. Let's fire it off. Notice that I'm on top of that rod first. And I want to heat it good before I start coming down onto the onto the flange and I'm just watching everything and there it goes this is the one we brazed up first and now we're bringing this one in like I said I like to drop it straight up and then I can drop it straight back down without losing my alignment And I start with my rod. I heat that first. And then I come down onto the boom. That's it. It just took it. Now let's go ahead and anneal up this brace so we can bend on it a little bit easier. And so we're going to bring this and we're going to Bring this over. These torches are so precise. So here you've got your brace that you just made. Throw it in the pickle so it gets rid of the heat varnish. Buff it. Sculpt it the way you want it. And you're good to go. So now you've made a solid brace. You've made a tool. Well, what about a socket and a flange? So if we want to make something like this, we get a piece of tube stock. I like to build mine with quarter inch rods. So I have a heavy stout. I can make it a stronger connection than it was at the factory. It's going to last longer and be more durable. So that's what I do. If we're going to do this, we're going to make it about right here. 
So let's just say it's about there. And we're going to make a little decorative ring right there. Let's go to our bench motor. This time we're going to use a triangle file. I'm just going to make a trail cut. And there's our line. And so maybe you don't have a ch chop saw or a Dremel or anything like that. So you have to do it old school. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a trail cut. A trail cut is exactly the way it sounds. As you're cutting through the piece, you're moving. And so it follows in a straight line. Okay, now we just need to deburr the end. To deburr this, we can just use a triangle scraper. Remove all of those. So there's our piece. Got our decorative ring in it. This is our rod's going to go in there. We'll get a piece that's going to become our flange. And there we go. All right, so what we've got is we've jigged it up, got everything level, straight, centered, and we're going to add flux. And this time, this is going to go faster because they're both considered thin walled or thin tubing. So I won't use quite as much heat. And I'm actually going to start it in the back. And we'll bubble that flux, come working it around. The wall of the tube is thicker than the brass, so I am giving it a little more. Okay, that's it. That's all it took. Let that cool, and we'll pull it out. And so after we get them cleaned up a little bit and roughed out, there's our little socket and flange brace we made. Yeah, there's our brace. So these are just set, be ready for your final buffing and get them fit and dressed, clean off all the edges. You're ready to put this on. Now remember, this is the side that we it went ahead and annealed so it's soft. This is the side that was not annealed and notice we can't bend it as easy. But this side is nice and flexible. So it'll take your contours really well. And then you just dress and get the rest of the heat marks off. And those are good. The same with the same with this. Bend it around a little bit. And then this is the tool that we made to start things off. So experiment to learn your heat. And uh, have fun with it. Fabrication takes this job to a whole new level. And there you have it. Fabrication and silver soldering debunked. All the mysteries are gone. <laughs> it is a cool thing to be able to do. A lot of times it's built up that you have to have milling machines and lathes and you have to have all this big equipment to do that. Negative. You can do this with a lot of the tools that you have around. You can buy preformed discs and just work from there, brass rod. The possibilities are endless. This is a great skill set to learn. Very important for what we do. I'll put the part numbers for everything that I use down in the description along with a link to Faree's tools. You can give them a call and get some of these cool tools for yourself. I appreciate you stopping by and following along. It means a lot. I like reading the comments and interacting with you. Till next time, this is Wesley signing out.